in cities all across the United States, we are facing a Silicon Valley-fueled swarm of birds. Except, these aren't the winged creatures from Alfred Hitchcock's classic film. Instead, these swarms are comprised of dockless electric scooters that feel like they're taking over sidewalks and bike lanes. Dockless electric scooters are in demand, and they will most likely be rolled out in countless more cities across the country, if not the globe. They're easy to access and easy to use, but are they environmentally friendly? Considering that these scooters seem like they will become a mainstay in the transportation sector, I feel it's important to understand what effect they hold on our environmental footprint. This new electric scooter is essentially a classic two-wheeled scooter with a motor attached. But what makes it so innovative and why it's gaining so much traction is that these scooters are now dockless. This means that someone can download an app on their phone that gives them a map of all the scooter locations. They can walk to them, scan the scooter's barcode for a small fee, and drive wherever they want. And at the end of the trip, they can just walk away, leaving it for the next person. Companies with catchy one-word names like Bird, Lime, and Skip have transformed a device that was previously used primarily as a toy into a serious transportation option. However, the rollout of these scooters has been pretty questionable. Often companies like Bird and Lime will introduce electric scooters with guerrilla tactics, seemingly guided by the belief that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to get permission. They drop off hundreds of scooters on sidewalks in the dead of night without any approval from local municipalities. In response, city governments like Ann Arbor's in Michigan struck back and impounded dozens of scooters. Clearly, this type of dockless transportation is uncharted territory. But according to a Qualtrics survey of 500 adults across the U.S., two-thirds of respondents felt that these scooters could have a positive effect on their city. Are these scooters good for the environment, though? One major scooter company, Lime, claims that they saved 540,000 pounds of carbon in the first three months of 2018. But as a Vox report puts it, the answer is an unsatisfactory, it depends. There are a number of factors that go into the scooter's environmental footprint. Where it's charged, what it's replacing, and how often the scooters are trashed. In the case of charging, at the end of the day, freelancers round up scooters around town and plug them in at their home to charge overnight. So if you live in a city with an electrical grid that runs on wind or solar, your electric scooter ride will be emissions free. If not, your motorized scooter is still emitting carbon. The overall environmental impact of these scooters becomes a little more tricky when you look at what kind of transportation modes they are replacing. Scooters only lower carbon footprints if they replace a car ride. So if they end up replacing a quick walk or a bicycle ride, then they might be doing more harm than good. According to the Qualtrics survey, 34% of riders are using the scooters not for commuting, but for joy riding. So this might cause more energy demand and ultimately more greenhouse gas emissions. But for people who are using scooters instead of driving, they can be useful for short trips as a part of a multimodal commute, such as between someone's home and a train station. The issue of how often these companies replace their scooters is also of environmental concern. Scooters seem to be heavily used when they are introduced into a new area. And when companies like Spin claim they can recoup the cost of a scooter after two to three weeks, recyclability and reusability might be one of the first areas to get the ax in this mad dash to corner the electric scooter market. This means more scooters in landfills and a constant need for the environmentally harmful extraction of materials like lithium for new batteries. That being said, the Austin-based regional general manager for Lime refutes this, claiming that they use every part of the buffalo. When a scooter needs to be scrapped, they salvage it for parts to use for future bike and scooter repairs. So if done right, these new tech startups can minimize their environmental cost of production and manufacturing. Ultimately though, the environmental impact of these new motorized scooters depends on their context. If you do use them, try to think of them as a way to replace your car ride, rather than replacing a walk. 
And during your ride, make sure you aren't treating the scooter like trash so it lasts much longer. And please, when you're done, park them somewhere that doesn't block a whole sidewalk. Thanks for watching. If you've just discovered my channel and liked the video you just saw, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and hit the little bell next to it. If you really want to support my work, consider heading over to Patreon to support the channel financially. That is the number one thing you can do to help this channel grow. And again, thanks for watching and I will see you in two weeks.